AMD, a huge American chip maker, just reported Q3 numbers and we've seen a 4% rise in the stock after hours. But despite this climb, the business missed on top and bottom line estimates. So based on that information and seeing as this is one of America's leading chip makers, what do we make of Wall Street's reaction? Seeing as this is a business that is down 60% year to date. And should we as value investors be buying into this business? Stick around and find out as we're talking about all that and more on today's episode. How's it going? Welcome to Everything Investing. I hope you're having a great day today. We'll take a look at the financials of this business, top line, bottom line, balance sheet, cash flows, etc. And finally, we'll conclude with an evaluation of this business using our intrinsic value calculator. And if you enjoy this type of content, we post on here regularly. So subscribe, like the video. And without further ado, let's jump into it. All right. And starting with the comments from the CEO. CEO, they immediately addressed their misses on top and bottom line by saying their results came in below their expectations due to the softening PC market and substantial inventory reductions across PC supply chain. And that despite the current headwinds, their revenues still were able to grow at 29% year over year from increased sales of data center embedded and game console products, which are their other three main segments. And they're confident that their leadership and product portfolio, strong balance sheet, ongoing growth opportunities, etc., will position them well to navigate the current market dynamics. All right. So they're letting us know why the revenues are slightly down here from a quarter over quarter perspective, but they are still up year over year. And we can see they have been able to grow the revenues quarter over quarter, obviously excluding this quarter by some substantial numbers. Unfortunately, we cannot say the same thing for their earnings per share numbers as we've seen a decline over the past four quarters now. And it seems that they're having some issues with growing their net income. We'll jump into that in just a second. Let's take a look at the segment results for Q3. We can see strong numbers across the data center segment and especially especially their embedded segment here where revenues increased, you know, about 600 million here. And we had an operating income benefit of about 200 million client revenues had an opposite impact where they were down about 600 million year over year. And then we actually had an operating loss here of 26 million from $500 million in operating income last year. Gaming slightly ticked up 200 extra million dollars there, but then operating income, obviously this means that they've had higher expenses here and we'll touch on those in just a second. But really what we want to look at here is their embedded segment. Clearly this is what wall street really liked about this business is that their expenses expanding on their segments and they've had a net benefit here of a billion dollars in terms of revenue and 600 million dollars in operating income if they can continuously grow the segment the business will obviously have an upward trajectory especially with the stock price now let's jump into our statement of operations total net revenues of 5.5 billion dollars for this quarter that's up about 1.2 billion dollars from last year cost of sales only up about 500 million dollars from last year and that ultimately leads to our total cost of sales 3.2 billion dollars up about a billion dollars gross profit of 2.3 billion dollars which means we actually did have a further contraction in their gross margin. Hopefully they can reverse that trend soon, but they have historically stuck within that 40% range. And then when we deduct for our other expenses here, they've increased their research and development costs, marketing, SGNA, etc. We're left with an operating loss here of $64 million. Last year, we had about a billion dollars operating income. So it's clear the impacts to their increased operating expenses is really impacting this business. So the question is whether in the future they can reduce those costs or if their other segments can actually start to compensate for that. You know, will they be able to be Become profitable in terms of their operating income and they seem to think so and that's why they've listed here their next journey is to reach out to their 300 billion dollar total addressable market of course they're going to look to gain more market share their increased revenues etc they're looking to innovate further expand their data center leadership and grow at high rates ultimately for the benefit of the shareholder all right that leads us to our balance sheet all right so about five billion dollars here in cash on the 2.4 billion dollars in debt yeah not an issue here for investors. Balance sheet looks super clean. Shareholders equity is also growing exponentially. So all that looks good. Finally, let's look at the cash flows. They were able to produce $965 million operating cash flow, deduct our CapEx figure of $123 million, and we're left with free cash flow of $842 million for this quarter. Relatively strong results despite the headwinds and the issues that they are facing throughout this quarter. Results in a free cash flow margin of 15%. Okay, let's jump into our calculator and see what this business is worth based on our future projections of this business. So if we assume assume here that on an average basis, they can continue to grow their operating income in the future. And that this was just a poor quarter for them that they can grow off this $3.6 billion operating income figure that they had last year. Then when we plug this into our calculator, if we require a 10% return, they do not currently pay a dividend and they can grow closer towards 20% for the next five years that drops down to about 12% for the five to 10 years after that on a 25 PE, like they're kind of currently trading at this stock should be worth about $92 per share. 
And that's not a crazy projection considering we were up to $155 at the peak of 2021. So it's definitely achievable for them here. And if they can continue to grow at even higher rates, let's say it's closer towards their five year EPS numbers. You know, let's say it's about 32% for the first five years that drops down to 25 on a 30 PE. This stock should be worth about $277. Now, again, this isn't the best case scenario where all their segments really benefit from higher demand. There's growth across the board and they have no issues. Yeah, this is what we can expect from that scenario. Scenario. Now, in the very worst case scenario, the growth really starts to slow here. More competition because they are kind of going through what we can call the chip wars right now, where there's a lot of different competitors in this space, all competing for the exact same market share. And let's assume we have less demand, etc. Yeah, let's say they can only grow at 5% for the first five years. That drops down to, let's just call it, you know, 2% for the five to 10 years after that on what would be like a 20 PE. Yeah, the stock would drop down about $26 per share, $42 billion market cap. Right now, we're trading at $96 billion in market cap. Again, $60 per share. So if you like AMD, if you think this is going to be the semiconductor of the future with lots of growth across all their segments, especially once we see a rebound in the economy, I mean, this could be a really great buy at this opportunity, considering when the economy was progressing as expected, we saw some massive growth from this stock, you know, over a thousand percent despite all the competition. However, if you believe there are other semiconductors that are just positioned to outperform AMD in the future and in the long run, and that they'll take over more market share than AMD will, then yeah, we're probably better off just staying hands off. Let me know your comments down below. I'd love to hear it and have a discussion. That's the analysis for today's video. If you've enjoyed it to this point, please subscribe and like it helps out the channel greatly. And with that, I'll catch you on the next one.